There is a common saying about success that the journey to it is paved with failure and disaster. Well, SpaceX is no stranger to either of those. They're constantly attempting to innovate and have so far not let setbacks slow them down. That's the case with their new super heavy rocket, which has returned to the launch pad after multiple fiery failures. We'll be covering that and more in today's video. First up, SpaceX's latest super heavy rocket. SpaceX has recently been testing out their new prototype of its huge super heavy rocket rocket known as the Booster 7. Unfortunately, back in the middle of July, the team suffered multiple launch failures, which led to the Booster 7 being taken back to the drawing board. Now, after a little more than half a month has passed, the team is back with the latest version of the Booster 7. The Super Heavy rocket has been moved to a launch pad at Starbase, SpaceX's South Texas facility for testing. CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk, shared the news on Twitter as he stood at the launch pad of Starbase, jokingly saying that he loves the smell of hydraulic fuel in the morning, a reference to the classic film Full Metal Jacket. He also attached an image of the rocket on the launch pad. The reason for the recent Super Heavy rocket test is that SpaceX is gearing up for their space program's first ever orbital test flight, which is set to take place sometime in the next few months. The Booster 7 and its accompanying upper stage spacecraft, known as Starship, need to be infallible by the time that date rolls around, which is what SpaceX is trying to achieve. The upper stage spacecraft Starship measures in at about 50 meters tall. When fully stacked up with Booster 7, the total height of the rocket is 120 meters. That combination makes it the world's tallest rocket so far. The plan is to use this Starship Booster 7 combination to take humans and cargo to the moon for NASA. But that's just the initial plan. The long-term goal is, of course, to reach Mars. Next, Starship's hurdles. The complete SpaceX rocket structure is also referred to as Starship, and to date it's only completed a handful of high-altitude test flights. Even that needs to be considered in a wider context, since the Starship system hasn't been in the air since May of 2021. That's a long time to be on the ground for a system that's going to have to be ready in just a few months. The reason for that is likely because of SpaceX's current regulatory issues. They've been dealing with hurdles in that vein and in the technical department for a while now. A recent and ongoing issue is the Federal Aviation Administration's, or FAA's, assessment of the program. The FAA's assessment found that SpaceX needed to complete 75 actions in order for it to have the go-ahead. The actions needed to be undertaken so that SpaceX's impact on the surrounding environment is mitigated. The area is known to be a biodiversity hotspot. SpaceX needs to comply with the FAA's requirements in order to attain a launch license from them. Without that license, the company won't be allowed to send up Starship for its orbital flight. The FAA made a public statement about it in June, saying that the environmental review must be completed along with public safety, national security, and other analyses before deciding decision can be made regarding the launch license. Lastly, SpaceX's super heavy failures. The last time SpaceX's Booster 7 was tested out was on July 12th at the Boca Chica Development Facility in Texas. The reason for the new prototype was that the old one couldn't give the rocket enough lift to escape into orbit around the Earth. Unfortunately, the test ended in a pretty spectacular looking failure, with what looked to be the engines being set off uncontrollably, leading to a massive fireball that was caught on tape by NASA's spaceflight. The test was specifically designed to offer a preview of what the startup sequence would look like at an actual launch, so it primarily had to do with the engines spinning up. The Booster 7 is composed of 33 of SpaceX's large Raptor engines, any one of which could have been the culprit in the disaster. Following the failure, Musk tweeted that the failed test had ended in an expected fashion. That might just be Musk's signature bizarre humor, or he might have been looking to assuage investors' fears about the situation. Regardless, he soon took down that tweet and acknowledged in a follow-up that it was actually not a good outcome. The fireball that resulted from the failed launch led to a sustained fire on the launch pad that was eventually extinguished. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. We hope that SpaceX's next test launch fares a lot better than the last one. Other news. Firstly, French scientist trolls Twitter. Even if you aren't an astrophysicist or science nerd, if you've spent any time on the internet recently, you probably heard about the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST. The JWST WST recently launched and was set up in orbit around the Earth, serving as the replacement for the decades-old Hubble telescope. The JWST can see much further and much clearer than the Hubble ever could, and it's already taking a number of stunning pictures of distant celestial objects that have quickly been circulated through every corner of the internet. With all of the amazing pictures and analyses being shared around through social media, one individual thought that this would be the perfect time for a lighthearted joke. That individual, though, happened 
determined to be one of the world's top physicists. The scientist, Etienne Klein, isn't just a renowned physicist. He's also a director at France's Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission. Klein saw an opportunity for a quick joke and seized it, uploading a picture of a slice of chorizo on a black background, and claimed it was an image of a distant star taken by the JWST. To sweeten the joke, he praised the level of detail that the JWST had managed to capture of such a beautiful spicy Spanish sausage. We personally think that it's great that a scientist of his caliber still has an amazing sense of humor, but others didn't appreciate the trick. Klein later apologized to the Twitter community, saying that his intention was to urge caution against simply believing everything you see on the internet, especially things that seem to speak for themselves. As a sort of olive branch, Klein later uploaded an actual GWST image of what's now being called the Cartwheel Galaxy. Next, space debris crashes in Australia. A farmer in New South Wales in Australia recently discovered a piece of space debris in a remote part of his land. When the farmer, named Mick Miners, came across the object, he first thought that it was a dead tree. But on closer inspection and after verification from experts, he learned that it was actually space debris that had crash-landed onto his farmland after re-entering Earth's atmosphere. The Australian Space Agency, or ASA, reported that it had come from a SpaceX capsule that was launched a month earlier, after which the piece of debris crash-landed on the 9th of July. The ASA also said that two other pieces were later found nearby, and asked individuals that came across others to report it to a debris hotline that had been set up by SpaceX. Dr. Brad Tucker, an astrophysicist at the Australian National University, was called in to examine the object. He's regularly called to examine similar discoveries, but the vast majority of those turn out to be false claims. This time, though, he had something to sink his teeth into, calling the discovery exciting because he'd never seen debris fall like this. Another expert, Don Polacco of Warwick University in England, attested to the rarity of space junk falling to Earth like this. It isn't that objects don't fall from space to Earth, it's just that most of them normally fall into the oceans, which cover the majority of the planet. If you're concerned about debris falling to the Earth and hitting someone, know that the only person recorded to be hit by space debris was Lottie Williams in the U.S. in 1997, and even then she wasn't hurt by it. However, as space exploration becomes more and more frequent, the regularity of space debris falling to Earth is bound to increase. Lastly, U.S. NRO launches another satellite. The U.S. National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO, recently launched its NROL-199 mission. This is the second of its kind in less than a month. The mission was run in partnership with Australia's Defense Department and was launched via a Rocket Lab electron rocket from New Zealand's North Island. The NRO is the Pentagon's reconnaissance arm that designs, engineers, and deploys spy satellites. So these launches were likely carrying further tech to augment the U.S.'s spying capabilities. The NRO itself did not provide details on what the payload of the rockets were, so it's safe to say that whatever it is, it's an object that is of singular importance to national security. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think SpaceX's orbital test flight will go off without a hitch? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.